Could you give your thoughts on the Honky Tonk Man, a guy who perhaps was not a great technical wrestler, but his mouth got him a lot of money in the ring, and then he made a load of shoot interviews? Oh my God! Um, Honky is has been here on the program in the past, and and uh, we I've got to talk to uh, somebody down in in. Uh, in the tech end of the experience here about uh, getting these old programs up uh, on this, these plans that we've got, but uh, he's been on the program before. We will have a place for you to listen to that uh, very shortly. But um, a lot of people know Honky is is from Tennessee. Also, his real name is Wayne Ferris. He was one half of the classic tag team of Wayne Ferris and Larry Latham, the blonde bombers managed by Sergeant Danny Davis, my old partner that along with Lawler and Dundee invented hardcore wrestling in Tupelo, Mississippi to our everlasting regret. I blamed Jerry Jarrett the other day. I said, it's all your fault, Jerry. You, you, you tripled business in your territory, but you, you let something loose on the world. Nobody knew how to, how to control it, uh, except you, but Wayne is, is Jerry Lawler's cousin. And broke in 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 his in his first year in the business. I th- I don't let's count how many names did he have. He was El Diablo. He was the kisser. Lawler got him a Gene Simmons body stocking and painted his face like Gene Simmons one time and and had long dark hair anyway. And he made him go out the ring and wrestle a whole match with his tongue stuck out. It's a wonder why there's been heat amongst them. Uh, so he was he was El Diablo. He was the kisser. Punk Rock he, Wayne Ferris. He was well. That wasn't until later. He was, um, he was, God damn it, was, no, the Riddler was David Schultz. Wayne was a few other things under a mask. Then he was just regular old Wayne Ferris, a baby face. And then he bleached his hair blonde and became punk rock Wayne Ferris as a heel and <laughs> teamed up with Jimmy Valiant when Valiant turned on Lawler in 78. And, but then finally, after the Blonde Bombers, and, by, and the Bombers were such a, t- a great top heel team and Larry Latham later spot the moon dog. Um, he was lighter then and could move and took big bumps and they were just such a classic Southern heel tag team. And Danny was so good as their manager. They drew money with, with Lawler and Dundee uh, over the Tupelo thing, but with the Fargo's that summer and on and off for about the next couple of years. And, and that's uh, Jarrett picked the bombers over the Freebirds. That's why Gordy and Hayes went to, Louisiana to work for Watts because the blonde bombers were the main event heel team and he didn't need two blonde heel teams. Um, but anyway, they got real good there. And then Wayne went on to, um, to, to Calgary and, and did the honky tonk Wayne Ferris thing. And then Vince saw it and blah, blah, blah. From then on, I, I, I cannot defend Wayne's work ethic because <laughs> He pretty much will do as little as possible, but he's possibly one of those guys that could have, that got more out of doing very little than anybody else in the business, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and no, I, I, I've seen him milk that for over twenty years. He used to come to Dennis's shows, and he'd come out to the Honky Tonk Man song, and then he would get on the mic and sing it while they played it a second time, and then they would do some stalling, and he'd get some kind of win. And then he would lip sync the song a third time, or not even lip sync, <laughs> but sing along to the recording yeah. while everyone left the building. Um, I'm, he was still a, he was having matches in the WWF where he could get by with it and take it like a slam in the finish. And it, <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you think, though? People who only know him as the Honky Tonk Man from the WWF and everything after that, and only maybe saw him the last twenty years where he really hasn't done much. What do you think they're missing? What don't they know about Wayne Ferris before he took on that gimmick? Oh my God, go back. We'll go back and watch the Tupelo concession stand thing and any Memphis stuff that you can get from, cause they were, they were still a team, I think through what 80 to early 81 to where there, there's some stuff of them out there. And, and there, plus I know I've saved some things. Their match with Lawler and Dundee and, uh, in, uh, Louisville where they ripped Jerry Jarrett's clothes off at night. <laughs> and there's some stuff out there on YouTube. Um, it just worked. It. I mean, they they knew how to they knew how to work a, a southern style tag team match and do all the heel spots. Midnight Express popularized some of them later on, but Ferris and Latham were there doing tiptoe and the crawl through, and uh, but they could also get some heat. And uh, you know, Wayne, it, it, he bumped a little bit more in those days, but he always he worked basic, but he had a good heel promo that got heat, and then later on. 
you know, he, he had the gimmick. Was there heat with him and Lawler back then? Well, if you, if somebody, if your cousin made you wear a Gene Simmons body stocking and painted your face up and told you to wrestle a whole match with your tongue stuck out, wouldn't you get mad at him? If he brought, pic- <laughs> if he brought pictures to the family Christmas party, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one that's got the pictures. I'm saving that for my, my photography book. <laughs> 